Hi everybody, my name is Maisie and welcome to this channel. Thank you so much for being here today. We do pick a card readings and today we're going to do a pick a card reading on what this person's feelings are about you right now today. But first we're gonna take a quick look at our sponsor today, Keen. This is a psychic network that connects you with all sorts of people that can help you with any situation. I'm talking psychics, mediums, tarot readers, whatever kind of reading you want, Keen has someone for you. And um, I find this, this whole website to be very informative and um, professional, so give it a try. I have linked up with them to get you a great discount. You get 10 minutes for $1.99, and that is by clicking the link in my caption below. Okay, back to the reading. We're talking about what their true feelings or thoughts are about you right now. So take a look at these crystals in front of me. Pick the one that's working with you today. If you need more time, you can totally pause. You don't have to get crazy here. Whatever one is jumping at you, that's the one for you today. So once you pick one, there are timestamps below and I will see you at your reading. Group one, welcome to your reading. This is for everyone who chose the selenite here. This is an identifier card that we're gonna start with. We have the Eight of Wands reversed. So Wands are about our uh, thoughts, dreams, and visions of the future, and Eight of Wands is uh, more or less like an inspiration card. When it's reversed though, it can mean that we're feeling stuck, we're feeling lost, we aren't inspired. So what this person is feeling about you has to do with feeling lost right now. Um, we're, we're just gonna start with that. We have a bunch more stuff to take care of. But the Eight of Wands in general just tells me like something is missing, something's lost here. This person has like lost their lost track of their love path, or um, they're just lacking the uh, the information about how to handle this kind of love. So let's see what we get here. We're gonna shuffle the cards, and we're gonna find out what this person's feelings are. What is Group One's person? feeling right now about this relationship oh, oh my god <laughs> whoops okay we're not gonna take that because that was just like half the deck that flew out we still have just two cards here so we're gonna just see what else comes up okay one fell on the ground i'm gonna have to get that excuse my hair if that made it in there okay and then i'm gonna just do one more I'm like, what are their thoughts right now on this partnership with, with you, group one? What are their thoughts? Oh, hey, look at that. This one was already there, I believe. Okay. All right, so I'm going to read these in the, the um, order that they came up, I think, or I'm hoping. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to read it that way. So we have um, the lovers. What a way to start, you guys, the lovers. Um, we have the Knight of Swords, Ace of Pentacles. Wow, it's the true thoughts and feelings. This is already a huge start. Uh, the Three of Swords reversed, Eight of Cups. Okay, these two are together. The Two of Pentacles and the Five of Wands. Okay, so no reversals except for this, this reversal here. I just... I have so many thoughts, so many things coming in all at once right now. But the first thing I will say is that the fact that this, well, sorry, there are two reversals. The fact that we have these two reversals coming up, whenever they, whenever reversals come up in a situation where most of the other cards are upright, these are areas or pinpoints where, um, where we are self-sabotaging or we, ha we need extra work or we need some more realization in this area. And for this specifically being about realization and like feeling lost and not knowing what to do, it's pointing to a person who doesn't know what to do because of this, doesn't know what to do um, because of this, but also because of this, this is past. So right away, I'm assuming that this person, that your person is um, someone with Knight of Swords energy. They are someone who's who's determined, maybe like witty, funny, interesting, um, 
action-packed, someone who's creative and uh, willing to, to go after what they want. So very endearing kind of personality, very attractive for someone who likes a go-getter. This person just doesn't quit. Um, the thing is, the reason it's reversed is because it's saying that this person in your relationship, for the first time or the first time for a very long time, this person doesn't know what to do. They're someone who knows exactly what to do all the time, except for in this situation. So you can see why this is a little bit difficult for them. Um, I'm gonna go back to the beginning because I like to read from you know the start to finish. But the lovers here tells us so much about what this relationship is. It talks about how you two are karmically bound. It's pretty, it makes me feel like you knew each other before you even got together uh, in a way. <laughs> that your souls were very connected. Um, and so when you met, it was like electricity. It was insane. It was um, a lot to take in. And this other, and even though you're ready to go for it, this other person is finding that all of that quick karmic energy is too much for them to process all at once. So if they're like, this makes me feel like there's ghosting going on. Maybe you guys are in no contact. This is obviously for specific people in this reading, but uh, the fact that no action is being taken from someone who is very active, um, no communication since swords can represent communication and no ideas since wands are ideas about what to do next. Uh, I feel like you two are not, either you're not together or if you are together, this person's being pretty distant about next steps. Now at the core of this relationship, we have the Ace of Pentacles. This is like dead set in the middle along with this Three of Swords here. So I, I think that the thoughts and feelings around this person and, and regarding you is definitely that they want to move forward. Definitely that they want to take the next step into this new life. Ace of Pentacles can, in a relationship sense, can mean like moving in together or getting married. It's about investing in long-term um, prospects with one another. So the Ace of Pentacles in the very heart of this spread makes me feel like, yes, you are 100% devoted to the possibility of, of uh, long term. Uh, this person wants to do that, but they are freaking out, you guys. <laughs> the Three of Swords here in a reverse position means that they are still healing from something that happened to them in the past. The Three of Swords can represent any time a person's boundaries or are crossed or their trust is broken in a relationship. So a lot of people automatically think cheating, which is totally possible. But this can also mean just, you know, lying or deceit or ghosting. Um, all of that feels like betrayal, a hit to the heart, you know. And so with this reversed position, it makes me feel like this person has totally gone through not exactly this kind of love, because every love is different, but I think this one, the one that you're in right now, um, is more potent than whatever they went through before, but I think it has more to do with the fact that they put their trust in someone and that person turned on them. Um, and it was very harsh for them. And honestly, they're still trying to figure out how to let it go, which is why the Eight of Cups is appearing here next to it. I immediately was like, these are together. <laughs> Um, this is healing from the past. This is still feeling the past. So I think that regardless of how much they love you, they still need more time to find healing from what happened. Unfortunately, maybe you came in their life before they found that path or before they found the healing. And so they're just putting you to the side for now. <laughs> but trust me when I say that they're not putting you to the side forever. This is just because they know they're not ready. Sorry. <laughs> the Two of Pentacles makes me feel that um, this person also has, I feel like they have more that they want to accomplish before they move forward with you because they know that they want this. Here I'm just like taking the Pentacles over here because they want this with you and they know that they're like, okay, I need money. I need my my career intact. I need status. Some people, you know, automatically think that that stuff needs to come first before love and before marriage, which, you know, it's not true, but 
it seems like this person's stuck in wanting to um, balance themselves out before they invite you into their life. And honestly, if this person was married um, or had a very serious relationship with someone where they had like a child or something like that, this can mean balancing the, the repercussions of this um, separation. So if they live together, maybe they're still balancing money assets and home assets, um, who's taking the dog, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I think that there's just things that they need to work out from this previous relationship still, even if it happened a long time ago, there's still some lingering stuff to take care of, um, business oriented stuff. The five of wands um, says conflicting thoughts. So yes, this person wants you. Yes, this person is ready for this or wants this to work out. But the five of wands says that they have a day to day battle on what to do next. <laughs> it's like, uh, should I text them today? And then they say yes. And then they're like, no. And then should we go on a date? And it's like, yes. And then it's like, no. So I think that this person has a lot to a lot of inner stuff to work through before they can have like a healthy, safe relationship with you. And they're doing their best to work through all this shit, but um, I don't know if they're uh, making you like include or making you feel included in that thought process, which may be why you're a little confused right now. But these are the thoughts and feelings, all good stuff, all very intent on like wanting you and wanting a relationship with you. Let's see. Let's see what else we got here. I have the astrological deck here. We're going to talk about just like kind of energies at play. What is, what kind of energies are at play here? Oh my gosh, look, you guys, we have Chiron, which is um, the wounded healer. It is about wounds that never leave us. Uh, I like to think about Chiron as the one thing that we're challenged to unlearn in our life based on how we grew up, based on previous childhood experiences. Um, so not only may have this, has this relationship not worked out in the previous instance, but maybe they grew up in a household where, um, marriage was not something that looked fun, <laughs> you know, that it still holds them down. And, oh, Hey, look at this. You guys, we have the second house too in reverse. We also have Uranus. So I just, I feel like maybe there's money issues involved. Maybe if they were in a household with um, with fighting parents that the fights were all due to um, uh, in oh God, what's it called spontaneous spending like someone who was a spendthrift and like wasn't able to hold uh, a budget Uranus in second house reverse makes me think of that uh, another thing I think about here is that because they grew up in a, a household where the income was never safe it was never like easily flowing, they feel that pain still of not having enough. And so maybe that equates to not being enough. And I think that's exactly where I'm at here, where it's like, I need to be enough for this person. I need to have enough for this person or else this will happen again or else I'll be left again, betrayed again. It has all, nothing to do with you and almost nothing to do with that previous relationship. I think that they still have some worth issues to work out based on the amount of money they make or their status or their job um, because of how they grew up in a household that was not stable, both monetarily and um, familially. Very interesting stuff. Um, let's see what else. I'd like to get some like more feelings and thoughts on like what this person thinks of you. So I'm going to just pull a couple cards from this sort of soulmate deck. Oh, okay. So we, we found one, the rest of the deck fell out. So we're just going to keep that one here for now. Okay. Okay. So the first one we have, are we still friends? So I love that they're the one pushing you away, but they also want you to, to be their friend. You know what I mean? Like, it's like they're not ready for this and yet they don't want to not be around you. So 
if you're in this weird position where you're unsure what to do, maybe you should just reach out and have a very um, easygoing chat. You know, maybe you should just go to lunch. Something that would have that would have that a friend would do, um, or a friend would invite someone to do. Make it uh, no pressure. That's kind of what I'm getting from this. We also have I am listening to my head, not my heart. So obviously that's true. We know that, but it just is like another reassuring card that this is not on you, that you're not crazy for believing that this person is totally infatuated with you because they are. Um, I think that they're just dealing with personal stuff that they on it that you probably wouldn't even want them to bring into the relationship. So just <laughs> think about that. Let's see, I'm gonna pull one more card just for you. This is a self-help deck. It's more like um, it has actions to do, um, affirmations and journal prompts. And I use it for my tarot astrology subscription um, where each month we go, you know, work with growth goals. And I use these cards to like have a focus for the next month ahead. So what do you need to do right now? That would be helpful. Okay, so we have listen here, which is a journal prompt. And I think what this is saying is that trying to figure out someone else's intentions or actions based on, you know, what we think we know is not healthy. So uh, this is about f listening to the right things. I'm going to read it out loud to you. In a world full of noises, what am I giving my ear to? What is something that I've chosen to listen to at the expense of my peace? How can I practice tuning my ear to what brings me life? I am committed to creating the space in my life and to, to listen to what my body and heart need. Love it. Okay, lastly, I think that, so now that we've got the journal prompt down, I think that we are gonna pull, we're just gonna use some, the astrological die to close out the reading. What can you do right now to like, Help yourself out, you know? What can you do to help yourself out in this relationship here? Okay. Saturn and Cancer in the ninth house. To me, this says like looking at expanding horizons. Ninth house is expansion. Um, you know, thinking about other cultures or other people, how other people grew up. Cancer is obviously related to home and nurturing. I just seen, I'm seeing so many family things here. Um, Saturn is the dad planet. So I would start by investigating on your own, unless you feel that this would be helpful to bring up. <laughs> but um, on your own, just think about if you've heard this person say anything about their father, um, because to me it looks like father and nurturing were issues like there was not enough nurturing or that father was not there to support the family the father wasn't there to create the family um so i just and think about how that would feel for someone else so that's kind of where what i'm getting from the die here okay group one thank you so much for coming and um i hope to see you again soon Hey group two, thank you so much for coming to your reading. Uh, I actually, I don't know what this is. So whatever this is, um, it's pretty cool, rainbow looking. Please tell me what this is. I feel like I should know it and I forgot. So let me know in the comments. <laughs> this is gonna be your signifier card for the reading. Uh, it'll just give us a jumping off point. We got the Knight of Pentacles. So already we're talking about a um, masculine figure, a young immature maybe masculine figure um, but we'll see more of that as we go this is someone who tries hard very hard maybe too hard um, just to start with all right so what is this person feeling and thinking group two okay feeling and thinking about this relationship right now 
Okay, we're getting some stuff like already right away. I think this person has a lot of stuff going on. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna read them in the order that they came up. So we have the magician reversed, judgment, the two of cups, the sun reversed, the empress, and the queen of cups. Okay, so right away, so I told you that this person tries too hard. You know, a lot of the time they go overboard. This is a Virgo card, so let's just think about that. Um, so if this person is a Virgo or has Virgo placements, uh, we know why. The Magician is also a Virgo card, in fact, and this is, I mean, it's Mercury, but you know, Mercury, uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So the Magician in an upright position, you can see like it's got all the suits of the tarot deck in there. and when it's reversed, it can mean that we feel lost. We don't feel like we have the tools that we need to succeed. Um, upright, this, this card can resemble someone who's just naturally good at everything, like really annoying kind of um, natural skills. Um, but reversed, it can mean that we don't feel skilled at all, that we're not prepared for this. So to me, it just feels like they want you, but they don't know if they have the tools um, to get to where they need to go with you. It's like, I don't have enough, um, like I'm not good at flirting. Like I, I've never been on a date. Like I've never had a girlfriend. Those are kind of things that I'm getting here. Uh, so instead of branching out, this person likes to go inward. So I feel like this person naturally goes inward. They don't, they don't share a lot and that's not because they're hiding their feelings. It's because they're honestly just terrified of their feelings. They don't know what to do with them. So um, they just hide instead and like bury themselves and work. Uh, the judgment card says that it's time to look in the mirror. It's time to recognize our flaws. I think that love is something that this person is not skilled at. And so because of that, they feel fearful of it. Judgment represents our fears. It re represents what, we're, what we feel we're not good at. Um, so in an upright position, well, seeing it in an, upright, in an upright position is actually really um, promising because this says that this person knows that they're not good at it, but they're not, and they're terrified of it, but they are not unwilling to change or to make changes. So to me, that says something um, promising for this partnership because I, they see the value that you have here, the two of cups. So... I, it's like this battle between like what I know I want and what I think I can't have, basically. The sun reversed also talks about um, lessened, cons <laughs> lessened uh, confidence, a lack of self-confidence here. So I, I just see that love is not something that they hold tightly to because they aren't, they just haven't had a lot of experience in it. However, this to me says that, says that their love is totally pure and true. Like they truly believe that you are the most beautiful creature on earth. So I, if we're talking about thoughts and feelings, this person thinks that you are a goddess, like of all goddesses. And the Knight of Pentacles, um, whoever this is, does not feel worthy of someone like you. So that's, that is also a part here. Um, they don't know how to express their feelings. Uh, so what they need is someone who is, this person can be beautiful and amazing um, and nurturing, uh, but in, at times a little more harsh, I guess, direct, uh, especially Queen of Cups if we're matching them together. So I think what this is saying is that the advice for you and this person uh, in, in your shoes is to be extra gentle, I think extra gentle with them. They need the extra love, if that makes sense. Let's see what else they think. I feel like we've got some good stuff here, but we need some more. So these are um, soulmate cards. Okay, so we got one. That one's kind of uh, simple. I'm sure you can read it, but we're just gonna... Whoop, okay. 
Okay, I just think that this person is naive, honestly. Based on the cards that we're getting, they seem naive and really adorable, but like has not done this before. And I want you to be careful with their heart because <laughs> they're so pure and delicate. Um, we have, I want to go on an adventure with you. Uh, we have, you rock my world. See, it's just like naive and delicate and cute. Um, and then I want to fight for this love. So they're like a fighter. They're ready to do this, but I don't know if they just know, they don't know where to begin. They need some like confidence from you, I think, in order to feel, to feel secure in themselves. Um, let's see what else we can do. We'll pull some cards from this astrological deck pretty quick. See what like kind of elements we're working. With. Oh my gosh. They just all fell on the ground. Let's see what elements we're working with. I don't know if you can see my like face. Okay. <laughs> Going back to what we were doing. What kind of elements we're working with here. Aw, okay. I'm gonna pull one more card. I love that we got, so we got Virgo here. Um, we also got third house and first quarter moon. Um, so I think that this is sort of, this to me is like a half-baked emotional state. Um, and then the third house is like expression, uh, communication. And Virgo, which is typically good at communication, uh, is not in this, in this instance. I think this person overthinks everything, the poor little gem. They are... Um, they're just like terrified to express their feelings because they don't, I don't think they've ever done that before. So like, what can you do? I want to see like what you can do right now to sort of help them out. Okay. Jupiter and Libra in the ninth house. I think you just need to make things fun with them. Libra is, you know, balance and everything, but Jupiter makes things bigger. And Libra is also like a party animal. So just making the fun big and exploring together. I mean, we said, it said, I want to go on an adventure with you. So maybe you need to go like on a road trip or just, I don't know, take a long drive somewhere someday. See what happens uh, without a plan. Make it no pressure for this person because they really need that. <laughs> they need that to feel safe with you. And I think they want you to make the first move. They're like waiting for you to make the first move. Okay, group two, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming and I'll see you next time. Hey, group three, welcome to your reading. Uh, for everyone who chose the rose quartz here, this is our signifier card for the reading. So we'll see what we get. Oops, Ace of Cups. What a great card to start with. I love that. Um, so to me that says like new relationship, something's coming into your life relationship wise or um, if you are start, have started to date someone and that's who you're thinking about right now, um, it looks very promising. So let's just see, let's see what the cards have to say about this. What is group three's person thinking right now? Whoops. What is group three's person thinking right now? Oh my gosh, I need one or two more cards. Okay. I keep falling on the ground. Okay. So I'm going to read them in the order that they showed up. Okay. We have the Five of Wands reversed, the Empress, the Knight of Swords reversed, the Four of Swords. The High Priestess reversed, 
the King of Cups reversed, Ooh. and the Three of Cups reversed. Okay, lots happening here. The first thing that's happening is that someone's overthinking. Five of Wands reversed, overthinking to the max, not sure what to do. I keep going one way, and then I go another way. What they think about you, I mean, this is definitely them. They're unsure about where to go and how to do it. What they think about you, the Empress, is that you're a goddess, like you're amazing, you're beautiful, you're worth everything, that you have self-confidence and um, intention and grace, a lot of good stuff. They just don't know how to act right now. <laughs> they don't know what to do. In fact, they're probably taking a rest period. That's That might be what the Four of Swords is here for. They're taking a break, they're being a little quiet, they're being a little silent, they're going against their better judgment. I just feel like, I feel like something happened here that maybe you're not aware of yet, but this person knows that they need to talk to you about it, they need to tell you, um, but this is maybe the reason for the retreat. Uh, the Ace of Cups, and the Three of Cups is triggering me a little bit. <laughs> um, the King, the Knight of Swords is someone who's very active and like go getterish, but the Knight is young. You know, they make mistakes. Not that nobody makes mistakes, but Knight of Swords especially is still learning about, especially about consequences. So I think that they're dealing with something that they did right now. They love you, they adore you, but they did something that might be harmful to the relationship. So they're sitting here waiting in like this rest period, going against what they know they should do, which is talk to you about it. The King of Cups reversed is someone who is an emotional manipulator uh, in a reverse position like this. Uh, he knows exactly how to twist feelings around um, to get you know the right outcome. So the Three of Cups in general, in terms of relationship stuff, is also a little bit concerning. Like sometimes this can mean a, an extraneous third party that came into the relationship. Um, it can mean cheating, of course, but uh, it can also mean like just emotional cheating or like someone else that you've been nervous about coming in and them kind of like giving them space but saying no, you know, I don't know. There's just some like shady behavior, I think, going on here. Um, I want to pull a clarifying card for like what this is for group three. We'll see what it says. Two of Wands reversed. So lacking vision. Um, it could just be that you guys aren't seeing eye to eye right now. Um, that the fun of the relationship is not there anymore, that maybe they're realizing that their mind is wandering. I mean, this person might not have done anything wrong, but um, I think their mind is wandering and the fun definitely is not there anymore. So they're like hoping, I think, for a new start. That's maybe what the Ace of Cups is here for, a new relationship, a fresh start. Um, and they just haven't said anything about it. I don't know why they're being so immature about it, that that it's bothering them that they're not on the same page as you, which, you know, makes sense, but they should say something. I wanna see, I have these other cards that we're gonna pull here. Let's see what else they think. Okay, there we go. See, I feel trapped. That's such an interesting one because that's totally, I think that's what we've been saying. Like the fun is lost. I honestly don't think this is about cheating at all. I just think that this person's mind is wandering in the relationship. That their vision for the relationship is lost. Um, that they might start fantasizing about other things that they shouldn't. And they know they shouldn't. So this is why they feel trapped. Because they're not 
communicating with you. Mm -hmm. If they communicated, maybe they wouldn't be trapped. I am a coward. This is a really brutal, like, this is a very distinct message, I think, for some people. Um, I am a coward and I feel trapped. I know that they've done something, like, wrong. I, I know I just said, like, they didn't do anything, but I think that they know that their actions aren't entirely pure or their thoughts aren't entirely pure, but they're not being, like, man enough or whatever to come forward. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to pull one card from this astrology deck to see like what influences are happening here. Oh, look at that Aries. Someone's being impatient right now. This person is not being like a committed partner. I like they are and they like love you and they think you're amazing, but they're getting impatient. They're being childish. They're not embracing their feelings. It's making me kind of annoyed. Um, this is almost, this is more about them than it is about you. Like you're not doing anything wrong. I don't think, I think you're just hoping that they're someone that they're not. I'm going to pull, I'm going to pull a card for you. Just like what, oops, what do you need to do in order to like, I don't know, be your best self in this, in this relationship. So the first one that came up for me was an action card. It says ritual. I'm going to read it to you. Ritual is creating a sacred experience to honor my journey. In ritual, I usher in a new season. In a new season while celebrating the path I have forged. Has there been a breakthrough moment in my life that I can honor and create ritual for? Today, I will bless the experiences that have shaped me with a physical practice. Try declaring an intention as you enjoy a flower petal bath. I think that what this says is that it's Aries being so chaotic. I just feel like you probably have been uncertain, unsure, worrying about this person and like what their spontaneous actions are going to be next. Um, they could have a drinking problem, which can also be a drinking or drug problem, but King of Cups is usually drinking, which can also be um, something that's out of your control, something that's spontaneous that you don't know when, when it's going to happen. Um, so ritual for you is creating stability within your own life and within your own right. Let's just do one more thing. I'm going to just roll the astrological die. We'll see what we got here. Look, Aries again. How funny. We have the North Node in Aries in the 12th house. Honestly, this looks like a karmic relationship or a relationship that is um, meant to help you heal something within you. Um, it's about finding stability in the unstable and finding peace within yourself um, and not uh, concerning yourself with the ups and downs of that, the chaos that someone else brings. North node is like the future. Um, Aries is what we're dealing with. And the 12th house is healing, spiritual healing. So I think this person is here for a lesson. I'm sorry to say, I don't know. I don't think that this is like a long-term partnership because they have so much growing to do. And also they're here to teach you something. So think about that a little bit. Group three. <laughs> That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming and I hope to see you next time.